Leonard Percival Howell. Leonard Howell was born June 16, 1898. He's also known as a gong. And that might sound uh, familiar to you because, yes, Bob Marley did call himself the gong and you know about Tough Gong. And that is directly from Leonard Howell being the gong. And he also called himself, well, he is also known as a gong guru, the Gigi Mirage. Uh, uh, what a search. What, what, what an informative. Tell us about your dad. I mean, who was Leonard Howell in terms of him being just a man? Talk to us about his early days. Uh, let me say this. I see my, my father, I would look at Leonard Howell as the man who announced the coming of El Selassie, just like how John the Baptist announced the coming of Jesus. And my father, who was a, a, a man that say what he means, he means what he says, he didn't clinch, and he was an intelligent person. I look at him as if he was more like a messiah. And I shouldn't say this to a lot of Christians, but I'm going to say this right now. As we look back in ancient times, you know, how they nailed Jesus to the cross for teaching about the Almighty God of Israel, the Redeemer of the world. Yet the people continue to clutch to their religious, who suffered so much atrocity for sounding the trumpet of a black king, who was crowned king of king, lord of lord, and conquering line of the tribe of Judah, and who opened the eyes of black people when he thought about black history here in Jamaica, most of which were so despondent right now you know you're talking about being depressed of all the atrocity that happened to them so you know how we'll develop a movement against colonial culture system and yes i can say this that this but we'll talk a little bit let us let's, let's talk a little bit about his um his early life because he where was he born which parish my father was born in the parish of clarendon Mm -hmm. in an area called Redland. Mm -hmm. A lot of people get Redland and Red Hills kind of mixed up because mm -hmm. they're so close. Right. And he was the oldest of, you know, many children that his mm -hmm. mother had. Mm -hmm. And he, the parents that wanted my, my father to have a better life encouraged him to migrate to the U.S., which he did mm -hmm. in the early 20s. Mm -hmm. And my father had been a very astute person even at, his, at a young age and um, you know during the process of all the atrocities and discrimination and segregation that was going on mm -hmm. with the colonizers you know of course he knew that he had to do something so I look at him that he was appointed and anointed mm -hmm. to do a work that a lot of us would never have done. Mm -hmm. And so that he, he traveled widely and, and returned to Jamaica as you said but it, it was when he came back to Jamaica that he started um, speak, talking about the Emperor, uh, about the Emperor Haile Selassie, well, about the, the crowning of the Emperor Haile Selassie and pointing um, to the Emperor, as you noted before, as the Messiah uh, returned to, to Earth. But how was he, how was he treated for this? <laughs> that's, the, that's a very good question. As you and I know, during colonialism, black people were very much on the bondage here in Jamaica back there in the 30s. In the 30s, in the 40s, in the 50s, in the 60s, well, they say they give us independence in the 60s, but all they give you was a national anthem and a flag because they didn't, the British people still does not believe that Jamaicans are capable to govern themselves, so they put them put in place the governor general mm -hmm. that still act on the advice of the queen. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine what was going on there. Yes. And the, the, the fact that my father came and started a new paradigm in Jamaica, mm -hmm. it was against colonial isms. Mm -hmm. It was against colonial uh, 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 behavior mm -hmm. for you know you to come and say you for listening you're to teaching radio. your Hit people about listening. their history. And uh, number one, for the fact that my dad established the crawling of His Majesty, who was the um, the twenty actually. The Rasta movement gave, gave concepts with, with El Selassie, which was the 25th monarch of the Solomonic dynasty. And my dad started preaching that this is where black supremacy came in. Because everyone throughout the history of the world, even the king uh, family, they had to come down and bow before uh, El Selassie. So that gives a different vibes to black people to let them know that they were not 
they were not born to be slaves. And your dad, um, Leonard Howell, and we're talking about Leonard Howell today, as you know, today's um, Sunday, June 13, Leonard Howell's uh, birthday, it will be June 16, he was born June 16, 1898, right, my sister? Yes. And um, he was, he was actually um, tried, he was arrested and tried for, for sedition. In, 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 for, for talking about the, the, the things he was talking about, including um, pointing to the Messiah returned to earth. You know, my father was imprisoned for, oh my God, please, let's not talk about pre the number of times. You know, that mm -hmm. was just one, but my father's been to prison so many times. Mm -hmm. you, can start, you can't even count on your Exactly. Father, father, so he was, he was actually seen as a, as a threat to the, the colonial structure to, yes, to, and, and, and thought. Yeah. Yes, he was. But, you know, the, one of the most admiration part of, the, you know, as a child, I, I just know him as daddy. And as one says, if you get close to a mirror, you really can't see yourself or see anything. You have to step back. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, later on in years, I really get to really respect and honor this man, not just as my father, mm -hmm. but as a hero. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can recall when my dad told me when they sent him to the jail, one of one of the times, let's say one of the twenty times or mm -hmm, the mm -hmm, number of times mm -hmm. that he was sent to jail for sedation in St. Thomas, you know, they, 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 they the cross examination asked him, you know, what did he say? And my father said, I, I, I told my my followers to think of his Imperial Majesty, Kings of King, Lord of Lord, conquering line of the tribe of Judah as the Messiah and the mm -hmm. Messiah of Love. Mm -hmm. And of course they thought my dad was was what crazy mm -hmm. and whatever charges that they had on him my father continued to say that he was innocent mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the final analysis when they sent him to prison he turned around because he hadn't he didn't have the he did not have the privilege to mm -hmm. get a lawyer mm -hmm. he had to be the one that actually <laughs> oh my god he had to be his own lawyer he mm -hmm. had to defend himself mm -hmm. against the heart mm -hmm. and the mob that wanted to persecute him. Mm -hmm. And he turned to them to the jury at the end of the day and says, my father says, I know I'm innocent and I was born a hero. Mm -hmm. And beyond the shadow of doubt, I will die a hero defending my race. And, and, and you know, there's a lot to be said about Leonard Howell in this regard, you know, because even, I know that in recent times we see academia um, now kind of catching on. They're coming from behind in the study of, of Leonard Howell and we see a few books out and so on. But, but, but it really has been such a shame that there seems to be, even within academia and, and the, the elite and the political um, ruling class here in Jamaica, that over the many years, this effort to suppress knowledge of Leonard Howell and who he is and who he was. And, and I, then I know I want to go to Pinnacle because he uh, he didn't just talk about um look the, the black messiah but he also talked about self-sufficiency this was the foundation of of everything that he believed in um self-sufficiency and independence uh, um full in emancipation of black people and so he created this space um a pinnacle we're speaking with our sister kathy howell who's the daughter of leonard percival howell leonard howell was born june 16 1898 he's also known as a gang and that might sound uh, familiar to you because yes bob marley did call himself the gong and you know about tough gong and that is directly from leonard howell being the gong and he also called himself well he's also known as a gong guru the gg mirage um we were just before the break um sister kathy uh we we brought up the uh, the pinnacle as 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 that space uh, that was identified, that physical space identified and created by Leonard Howell as a representation of uh, the independence and full emancipation or movement towards full liberation of uh, African people. Uh, tell us about Pinnacle, how many acres of land and what was done there? What was the plan? What Leonard Howell, what your father had in mind? Uh, Pinnacle was pretty much the aftermath of slavery. And I would consider Pinnacle of the anchor on our, our, our tradition and heritage. Pinnacle for me represents liberation. It represents equality. It represents dignity and self-empowerment. And most importantly, sister, Pinnacle is the birthplace of liberation of the Rastafarian movement in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, you know, we're still in limbo agitating for a Rasta heritage site in Pinnacle. Mm -hmm. And by the help of our ancestors, we're going to succeed by any means necessary. Now, my father bought Pinnacle back there in the, in the late 30s. 
and he brought clinical simple with the con concept that the street meeting that he was being held all over the country and being uh, ostracized for keeping street meetings even at one time they put a price on my father's head which of course they did um, eventually killed him but let let me say this about Pinnacle quickly Pinnacle um, had was the concept where we had to organize centralize and 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 this was an idea that came into my dad's uh, mind where we had to have a place for ourselves a safety place for ourselves that we weren't getting beaten up by the police all the time i heard my dad talk about 200 to two, uh, uh, 2000 or something like that but eventually as a child when i was born up there i know we had over 600 acres of land even up until maybe the um the 70s 80s or something like that because they use some of those lands for the boy scout uh but my dad wanted us to repatriate to africa because the concept was repatriation and in order for us to repatriate we had to have internal repatriation where my dad thought we had to be economically um uh, sufficient so everybody there had this whole concept of self-sufficiency, self-esteem, uh, self-development, uh, trying to do something in order to earn money to go back to Africa. So everyone in Pinnacle was a skilled or professional person because they had planned to go to Ethiopia under the umbrella of the EWF. And unless all those people up there were skilled, and, and had some kind of ID, you know, preparing themselves to go to Ethiopia. And so, so that, and so that our, listener, our listeners understand, and for those who are hearing this for the first time, here is one man in Jamaica, along with his team now, moving out of St. Thomas, where the, the idea of Rastafari was birthed, and moving now into St. Catherine, to, to a place, a pinnacle, thousands and thousands and thousands of acres of land, bought and purchased by Leonard Howell, as Jamaica's first self-sustaining community, meaning that those who went with him, this was an entire community that included thousands of acres of land where people were living uh, and sustaining themselves. They were planting, living off the land. They were um, taking care of their own, uh, making their own um, tools, making their own, uh, I suppose you had the blacksmith and the all kinds of smiths and the oh, all yes, kinds. Because, so it was a know, proper... I mean, yeah, most yes. of them, they were farmers, they were farmers, they were skilled trademen. So they this was a self-sufficient community. It was almost like a state within a state. This was a self-sufficient um, community because Leonard Howell understood that that was necessary for full freedom, full liberation, and even for repatriation um, uh, to happen. One of the great injustices uh, in Jamaica is what has happened to the land's pinnacle belonging to the Rastafari community through Leonard Howell uh, here in Jamaica. And the extent to which successive governments in Jamaica have stood against the people, and we say this without fear or favor, have stood against the people in returning those lands to the people or, uh, or, or um, giving re reparations f to the people for those lands. So this is, this is a... a, a, a a very, very, it's a stain, it's a cancer, it's a stain on the conscience of Jamaica that the lands at Pinnacle are going the way they're going and have gone the way they've gone. And still, and still, there is a National Council for Reparations here in Jamaica. I don't know if they're functioning now, but there's a National Council for Reparations with an arm of that council responsible for internal reparations that have not yet said anything about Pinnacle after all these years. Before the government hijacked the National Council for Reparations, let me finish my sister because I'm, I'm, I have something to say. Before the government hijacked the reparations movement in Jamaica, Pinnacle was at the center, as was Coral Gardens, of the rep internal reparations movement here in Jamaica. Now that the government has hijacked the reparations movement, Coral Gardens has, has been cheated out of everything. And, and, and I've been giving some wishy-washy um, few dollars and, and, and government is responsible now for Rasta. Uh, and, and Pinnacle, there is silence on Pinnacle. And in the, in the name of Leonard Howell, on this June 13th, just, just a few days from his birthday, we demand either the return of the lands to the people, because you have the documents, or reparations. And we also demand that you recognize Rastafari that you use in your tourism ads and so on, and make Pinnacle all of Pinnacle, a national heritage site, and much more, much more than that. But we go on. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
thank you so much for this uh, program, sister. And I hope that the government bodies are listening because it's about time. We have to have pinnacle heritage side by any means necessary. Jaras the Parai, blessings always. Give thanks, always. my sister. That is Kathy Howell, Catherine Howell, the daughter of Leonard Howell. The informative information presented in this video is motivational and is positively aimed at inspiring, educating, and entertaining the viewers with the cutting edge of critical reasoning. If you enjoy the contents on the Black Radar YouTube channel, please consider subscribing to show your support.